Okay, hi everyone. Um, this is a video to go over the second half of section 3.9. So if you haven't watched the first video on 3.9 um, and done the first four practice questions, you need to go and do those now. I want to make sure you've got the basics of related rates down before we do these next two problems. Um, these two problems both involve similar triangles. So um, I'm going to just do a quick little mini review on uh, similar triangles, especially in this case here where you've got uh, two right triangles sort of nested in one another. So um, this is a little applet that I've made just to demonstrate. So I've got uh, this blue right triangle here and then inside it I've got a red triangle. So if we look at these triangles closely, they actually have the same angles, right? They both have a right triangle or a right angle in the corner. Um, they've got the same angle in the top left and then the same angle um, in the bottom right. So that means that the ratio of their side lengths is always going to be the same. So I'll show you what I mean by that. I'm just going to add some labels here. First, let's look at the blue labels. So um, the height of the blue triangle is 3.5 and the base is 7. So the height is half of the base. Now let's look at the red triangle. The height is 2.5, the base is 5. So again, the height is half of the base. So when that's what I have written here. The ratio between the height and the length is 0 0.5. Um, for the big triangle and for the red triangle, same thing, 0 0.5. So that's never going to change. I'm going to change the size of my smaller triangle. And note this value here, the ratio between the height and the base always staying consistent. It's always 0 0.5, no matter how big or small that triangle is. Even if you draw it, even if it became bigger, it would actually still be um, the same. Okay, it would actually still be the same. So uh, it always is half, the height is always half of the base. Um, so that same idea is going to pop up in both uh, problems today. So just keep that in mind. The first thing we're going to do is similar to this. Opening the wrong thing. Um, here we go. Except this time our water tank is a cone and not a cylinder. So as the water level is going to be rising in our water tank, uh, the radius of the water um, or the radius of the surface of the water is going to be changing. So that's what makes this question a little bit harder um, than the cylinder question we did before. So just so you can visualize what's going on. Here we have a cone. I think it's orange soda in this example instead of water, but the idea is the same. Okay, so uh, let's just fill the, we're going to reset everything here. Um, so the cone is going to be filling up, right? And you can see the radius is getting larger and larger as the cone fills up. Um, and the height is also getting larger and larger. Um, so we're going to be interested in how high the water level is rising at a certain point. OK, so let's read everything that we are given. Um, we know that the base radius is two that's labeled on the diagram. The height is four. So here's our similar triangles. I'm just going to highlight them in red. So it looks like the height of that tri or the radius is two. The height is four. It means a radius, no matter how, how high the water level is, is always going to be half of the height. So there's our similar triangles. We're going to put that to use in a second. Um, water is being pumped into the tank at a rate of two meters cubed per minute. So there's one rate. Find the rate at which the water level is rising when the water is three meters deep. So let's write some information down. We're given that the rate at which the volume is increasing is two meters cubed per minute. Again, you can tell it's volume because of the units. Meters cubed um, implies that it's volume. Um, they don't tell us what the volume is at the point we're interested in. That's OK. Um, at the point we're interested in, the height is three meters, the height of the water. Okay. Um, we want to know what dH dt is. That is what we want to find out. And the radius, 
Remember that special relationship there because for the entire cone, the radius is two and the height is four because of special triangle, or sorry, not special triangles, similar triangles. Um, because of similar triangles, the radius is always going to have that relationship with the height. So the radius is always going to be half of the height. So I'm going to just write this here and the radius is always going to be height divided by two. Um, so it would be 1.5. Okay, at the point we're interested in. I don't know anything about oops, the rate at which the radius is changing. But I also don't want to find out the question's not asking for that. So um, we'll see how we need to use that information in a second. OK, so now we need to write an equation that relates all these variables together. And that equation is going to be the volume of a cone equation. Again, you don't need to memorize those. I will give you any volume equation you need on the test. So the volume of a cone or any pyramid shape is always a third times the area of the base times height. OK, and here's where we need to be smart. OK, radius is changing with time this time, so it's not a constant. So if I were to take the derivative at this point, I would need to use the product rule because there's a product between radius squared and height. Um, but I also don't know the rate at which the radius is changing with respect to height. So I'm going to be smart here and just get rid, rid of the radius from the equation altogether because I don't really know anything about its rate and I don't need to solve for the rate. So I'm going to just stick this relationship in here. Since radius is always the height divided by two, I'm going to replace the radius with that relationship. I'll write that down. R with H over two. And we'll simplify before we actually take the derivative. OK, so we'll have volume equals one third times pi times H over two squared times H. OK. Um, so we'll simplify that. Because we need it's better to take the derivative of a simplified equation. So we'll have one over three pi and we'll have H squared over four times h, right? So I just squared um, both terms in that fraction. And then I can combine the h's and the constants together before I take the derivative. So I'll have one over 12, which is a constant, times pi, which is a constant, times h cubed, which is not a constant. OK, and now I'm finally able to do step three, which is taking the derivative with respect to time of both sides of this equation. So on this side we have V and on this side we have 1 over 12 pi times H cubed. OK, uh, 1 over 12 times pi, that's a constant. So any constant multiple, when you're taking a derivative, you can just pull it out and multiply it to the answer. So this is going to be the same thing as, so I'll just rewrite this again. So V equals 1 12th pi times d by dt of h cubed. OK, and so on the left hand side, the derivative of volume with respect to time is just dv by dt. Nothing fancy there. Uh, we have the constant that we pulled out and for the derivative of um, with respect to time of h cubed, we have to use the chain rule. Remember, h is a function of time, right? It is, uh, it's changing with respect to time, so we need to use chain rule here. So we bring the 3 down, so we get 3h squared times dh dt. Okay, so now we can solve for what we want. What we want is dh dt, so we're going to divide both sides of the equation here by these other terms. times 3h squared. Um, okay. And then step four is just plug in everything you know. So dh dt is dv by 1 12th pi times 3h squared. So dv dt was 2.
pi, oops, 1 12th, uh, times 3 times h was, the height was 3. And we have pi in there, so uh, there's going to be um, some rounding you do. This question doesn't specify what you should round to, so I'm just going to pick two decimal places. Again, I'll tell you what to round to on a test or a quiz. Um, so you get 0 0.28 when you plug that into your calculator, and the units are meters per minute. Okay, so there's your answer, but uh, we need to write a sentence to interpret that. So we're looking at the, the rate at which the height is changing with time, so that the height of the water is rising at a rate of 0 0.28 meters per minute. The water level... is rising at a rate of two meters per minute. Okay, great. So just gonna zoom out and quickly go over that one more time. Um, if you need to see another example of a cone question, just Google related rates cone. Um, this is another classic question that a lot of people have made videos on, so you can watch another version if you want. Okay, so first we looked at these similar triangles and we saw that the relationship between radius and height is always that the radius is half of the height. So when we wrote our equation down, we utilize that fact, so we replace the radius with h over 2, and that made our equation much, much more simple, and we took the derivative with respect to time on both sides. Uh, we solved for dh dt, which is what this question was asking for, and then we plugged in our known values. Okay, um, so the next question involves shadows, and th this is another question where similar triangles are going to pop up, so I'm just going to remind you of those. Right, so as um, in this case, we're going to have two triangles that look identical to these triangles I've drawn here. So no matter where this red triangle is, the ratio between its height and its base uh, is always going to be 0 0.5. Okay, and then same with the larger triangle. Doesn't matter how big or small you draw them, the ratios of the height and the base always remain identical. Okay. So here we have a searchlight on the ground and a man is walking away from the searchlight towards this wall. Um, and we're looking at the shadow that's formed on the wall. Just so you can get an idea, the best one I could find um, doesn't, isn't quite the same because in this case it's a lamppost instead of a searchlight, but it gives you an idea of what's going on. So here, look at the shadow on the ground. See how the shadow length is increasing with time, so as the skateboarder is moving away from the lamppost, his shadow length is changing. So we're going to have a similar scenario. Um, in our case, the shadow is going to be along a, on the wall, um, and we're still going to have a person, and as the person moves towards the wall, the shadow length is going to change. Okay, so let's try and draw that. So our searchlight is, so here we go. Um, so here's the wall. Here's the ground. Okay. Um, there's a searchlight that is 20 meters. Sorry, my, I can never draw nice straight lines. There we go, especially on the computer screen. Okay, so the searchlight is 20 meters um, from a building, and a man is walking towards the building. So here's my man. Maybe I'll just draw a little stick figure so it's clear that it's a person. Okay, the two, he's always going to be two meters tall. His height is obviously not changing. He's, um, yeah, he's not going to grow in this question or shrink. Uh, and so here's the searchlight. I'll use my yellow highlighter to show. Okay, so the searchlight is kind of, let me use a different a thickness, a thinner thickness to show. So... Right, so this is how a light works, right? It's going to shine here, but this is going to be the shadow on the wall. Um, and as the man moves closer and closer to the wall, his shadow is going to get, it's going to shrink um, because he's blocking less and less light. Okay, so here are the, here's the two triangles.
There we go. OK, so you can see the two triangles there now. They look identical to those tri similar triangles I was showing you here, right? So the red would be uh, the triangle made with the man, and then the blue would be the triangle made with his shadow on the wall. OK, um, and let's make some labels. So we're going to make this distance here, the distance between the man and the light, the base of that smaller triangle. We're going to make that X, and we're going to make the length of his shadow, the height of that larger triangle, we'll say that that is Y. And um, let's write down what we know. So we know that uh, X is, so the man is 12 meters from the building. And so uh, X would be eight meters since the distance so would be 20 minus 12, right? Um, we know he's going towards the building at one meter per second, so X is increasing, right? Because he's going away from the light, so the distance between him and the light is increasing then by one meter per second. Uh, y, we can solve for using similar triangles. So um, the ratio between Y, the height, and the base of that larger triangle is equal to the ratio between the height of the man, 2, and x, or 8 in this case. Okay, uh, if you use some cross multiplication, um, you get that y equals 20 times 2 over 8, which is 5 meters. Okay, and dy dt is what I want to solve for in this question. Okay. So the equation, so that's uh, step one done. Step two, we need to write an equation that relates uh, X and Y together. Um, we're not going to use Pythagoras here because the hypotenuse is not really involved in this question. And so it would just complicate things to write an equation involving the hypotenuse. Um, so we're going to use our similar triangles equation to relate X and Y this time. Just going to zoom out a little bit. There we go. OK, so the equation I'm going to use is just relating the height and the base um, of the similar triangle. So again, y over 20 is always going to equal uh, x. Oh, sorry. Height over the base is always the height over the base. So 2 over x. And we're just going to cross multiply to make this a little bit simpler. So I'll move the x up here so they don't have fractions and have to use the quotient rule because I don't want to do that. Uh, so I would get x times y equals 2 times 20, so 40. OK, uh, so there's my equation that relates uh, x and y together. Remember, I'm looking to find dy dt. So now I'm going to take the derivative of both sides with respect to t. So I'll have d by dt of the left side and then d by dt of the right side. So x times y and 40. Yeah. OK, um, on the right hand side, x and y are both functions of time um, and we have a product of those two. So we need to use the product rule. So we'd get the derivative of x first, dx by dt times y plus x times dy dt. And then on the right side, the derivative of any constant by itself is zero. Um, now I'm going to find, I wanted to find dy dt, so I'm going to isolate that. So I'm going to move, first move the other term to the other side. So I have x times dy dt equals negative dx dt times y. And then divide both sides by x. So I'll move up to here. So I have dy dt equals negative dx dt times y all over x. And now step four is plug in the known values. So I have negative one um, meters per second. 
times multiplied with uh, y was equal to five meters and x was equal to eight meters. So I get negative um, 0 0.625 meters per second. Don't round that off because it's an exact number. Um, Okay, so that's it, and we just need to interpret that. So that makes sense because so that's the dis the um, rate at which the shadow length is changing with time, and because the man is blocking less and less light as he moves towards the wall, his shadow is going to be getting smaller and smaller. So it makes sense that it's negative. So the length, shadow length, is decreasing. at a rate of 0 0.625 meters per second when the man is 12 meters from the building. Okay, great. So I'm just gonna zoom out and just quickly go over that again. So in this um, case, we're just using similar similar triangles for the whole question. We wrote down what we know and we solved for y using similar triangles, the ratio of that base and height of the triangles. Um, our equation that we wrote down also involves similar triangles. And then we took derivative of both sides. We had to use the product rule. We plugged in what we knew and then we got our solution. Okay. Um, so I really recommend you do the extra practice questions for this section. This section is um, the most difficult one in unit three, just because you're putting everything we've learned together in addition to like a real life scenarios as well. Um, so there's a worksheet practice questions. I would highly, highly, highly recommend you do those. And I would also try if you can to do the, the textbook problems. There's lots and lots of video resources out on the internet if you need to see more examples. Um, and OK, so that's the end of unit three. Actually, that's our last lesson in unit three. Stop recording. <laughs>